This one is long overdue. Today, we're going to be diving into my editing workflow, specifically with a photo of the great horned owl from this past winter. So grab some snacks, a warm drink, and let's dive into the edit. This particular image was a bit of a struggle to edit at first, and that's what I thought might make it a little bit more interesting. Because sometimes editing isn't so straightforward. It's not about clicking presets or following a specific formula. It's about really exploring the image and finding what works for that particular scene. In this case, I finally had a clean image of the great horned owl with no major distractions. The lighting fell off. It's a little flat with some highlights just barely overexposed. This photo was taken in the morning, so I really want to match that vibe, something dreamy, moody, and soft. First things first, I'm setting up my masks. The subject mask selection wasn't very accurate, so I used object selection to ensure I got a clean outline of the owl. Then I duplicated and inverted that mask, giving me one for the owl and one for the background. Before diving into the masks though, I'm going to tweak some of the global settings to start building out the vibe. I'll lower the exposure a bit and raise the black slightly to make sure we're not losing too much of the detail in the darker parts of the image. Next, I'm jumping into the tone curves to flatten the highlights and soften the harsher whites in the background. Then, over in the blue curve, I want to add some warmth to the highlights, just ever so slightly. I'm also going to create a slight S-curve in both the red and green curves, with an emphasis towards green tones. I also quickly adjusted the temperature and tint balance, leaning into the greens once again and adding a bit more overall warmth to balance the image out. Now it's time for the masks, and this is where I'm going to start shaping the mood more intentionally. With the background selected, I'm lowering the clarity. Since clarity affects mid-tone contrast, this gives it a softer, bloomier look to the highlights. It's kind of like simulating the effects of a mist filter. But to keep the background from feeling too flat, I bumped up the contrast a bit. And while I was at it, I put a slight boost in the highlights as well. Then, onto the owl itself. I made some simple adjustments, boosting the whites and the overall brightness just slightly, but carefully since I don't want it to look over-processed or fake. At this point, the edit is starting to come together. It's got that moodier, sleepy morning vibe to it, but it's far from done. I still haven't fully achieved the look that I've envisioned. Next, I duplicated the subject mask and used a gradient to direct more light from the left side where the natural backlight was already coming in. Then I did the opposite from the bottom right, another gradient to subtly darken that area. I feel like this adds a bit more depth and makes the owl feel more three dimensional, but it's definitely easy to overdo it when you're manipulating fake light like this. Even with all that, I'm still not entirely happy with how it's looking. So I went back in and played with the curves again. I also adjusted the overall warmth of the image and rebalanced it by shifting a tint slightly towards magenta. Then I moved down to the individual colors, starting by lowering the saturation of the blues. I also made the greens darker and a little less saturated. After that, I actually brightened up the yellow, just to bring in a bit more warmth into the scene. I also found there was quite a bit of orange in the image, especially in the owl. So I brightened that up and added a touch of saturation as well to really bring some life into its feathers. I also made small tweaks using the color grading wheels, adding more warmer tones to the highlights and cooler tones to the shadows to really bring a balance to the overall feeling of the image. With an edit like this, a lot of the process is just feeling things out, as I make more adjustments to build out the image I have in mind. Now I'm just making some more tweaks to the background mask, aiming to darken the overall tone and add once again a bit more warmth. And this is what I mean by my editing flow being a little bit more chaotic, especially when you're experimenting with something you don't normally do. But now, it was finally time for the finishing touches. First, I added another gradient, this time to deepen the shadows on the tree trunk. And while I was there, I realized I didn't really like the looks of these two out-of-focus branches, so I did a quick AI removal to clean up that distraction. Then, I slightly readjusted the crop. I also revisited some of the global sliders again, pushing the entire edit even further to try and really lock in the vibe I was going for. At this point, maybe I was taking it a bit too far, but there was no going back now. Finally, there was just one more thing I wanted to fix. While I was editing the photo, I noticed the owl's talons were kind of glowing, popping off the dark branch a bit too much. Don't get me wrong, 
It's definitely cool to see those giant razor sharp claws, but I decided to add in one last gradient mask over the owl just to bring in a little shadow along its underside. And with that, the photo was finally done. You know, I'm not entirely sure why I picked such a complicated edit for my first photo editing video, because I promise it's usually a lot simpler than this. But yeah, if you want to see more or even some general photo tips, let me know in the comments down below. Also, if you use Lightroom, head over to the community tab and search Curtis Snapshot. I've uploaded this edit there so you can download it and even show me how you would have edited the photo. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.